Hello, everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to use Hypothesis, the social online annotation tool. I'll show you how to install it and how to do some basic annotations, some formatting, and all of the basic things that you'll need to do to be able to start using Hypothesis in your classes and for all of your reading. Um, in the description of the video, you'll be able to find a few um, checkpoints uh, which, uh, for each of the different skills that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to try to break this up into little short segments. If you need to come back and refer to any one of them, um, just look in the video description below. It'll tell you at which point in the video you can find those segments. Let's get started. Naturally, the first thing you want to do is uh, create a Hypothesis account. You can just go to the Hypothesis webpage, hypothesis.is, uh, click the Get Started. And then the first thing you do is sign up, create a free account. You're going to just enter here some very basic information, username, make up anything you want. Uh, in my class, you do not need to use your real name as long as I can then map you on. Um, that will vary by depending on who's asking you to do these annotations. But create a username that will be publicly displayed uh, on all of your annotations, an email address that you want to associate with the account and your password. All very standard stuff. I won't go through. I already have got an account, so I'm just going to go ahead and log into my account. Next thing to do is to add Hypothesis to your browser. Uh, I use Firefox, uh, but what I'm going to show you now will work on any browser, including in Chrome. If you've got, if you're using Chrome, there's an extension. I'll show you that uh, next for those people that are using that extension. Um, but if you're using any other browser or um, or even Chrome, you can just use the bookmark that I find. It's just as easy to use as anything else. Um, to use that, you need to be able to make sure you can see the browser toolbar, and that's what I'm sort of pointing at uh, here. Um, and then what you're going to do is drag a bookmarklet. A bookmarklet is a bookmark that is going to execute some code on the page that you're on. So instead of clicking it, and a lot of people make the mistake of clicking here, you just want to pick it up and drag, hold it and drag it, and drag this to the uh, bookmarks bar up above. It will create this hypothesis bookmarklet right into your browser bar. And now, there you go, you're ready to start using Hypothesis. Okay, if you are a Google Chrome user, the nice thing about you doing that is that you have an extension that you can have instead of having the bookmarklet. Um, you can see I actually have my bookmarklet installed in Google Chrome, but I'm just going to show you how to get the extension uh, up and running. On the same uh, page, the Get Started page, um, you can just click Chrome extension. Here, you're just going to click through. It's going to take you to the extension page. You're going to click Add to Chrome. It's going to ask you for permission to install it. You're going to say you want to add it. Um, and then depending on which version of Google Chrome you're using, this might appear. You might need to pin the extension, but otherwise it should appear here as a little H that appears in your uh, right-hand bar. And now that's going to work the exact same way as the Chrome extension, as the bookmarklet rather, that I was just showing uh, you how to do. Right, here's where you see um, it's not appearing. It's hiding for me. Um, but if I click this little icon here, I can uh, pin the extension to make sure it's always visible. And that's what the advantage of the bookmarklet um, is, sorry, of the Chrome extension is, is that it's always visible. It's going to show you if there's annotations on a page that you go to, um, if there's annotations already there. And that will be quite nice when you're just browsing around the web and you're going to come across pages that have annotations. This extension is going to show you how many annotations there are in the background. Uh, if you were giving, uh, if you were given, as you were in my classes, uh, an invitation to join a group, you are going to be given a link special to your group. In this case, this is the class that I'm going to be uh, doing this for. You can just click, uh, you follow that link, you're going to have the option to join that group. Once you click that, you will be able to just join that group and you'll see all of the annotations that are part of that group. A few things on the group page that you can always just keep coming back to. If you, and then once you want to, you're ready to make your annotations or read other people's annotations, now is when you're going to use this bookmarklet. And if you have the Chrome extension, you would just click the, the little extension button on the right. Once you click that, it's going to pop open a drawer. The drawer um, here you can see you can kind of collapse it and pull it out again. And here uh, in this drawer, one thing that's kind of important to see is that you can either choose to look at annotations that are on the public channel, or you can go to the channel for the group that you're part of. Uh, obviously, I'm part of many groups. You're likely just going to have the public and the group that you just joined. Uh, as soon as you select that, then you're seeing only the annotations that are happening within this group. Making an annotation itself is very straightforward. You just highlight the text that you're interested in annotating. I'm just going to say um, highlight uh, this paragraph. And you can see that as soon as I let go, it shows you the option to either annotate or highlight. So I'm going to just choose to annotate. That's going to pop over the drawer. And here I can say this is the test annotation for you to see. Okay. Um, 
I'll show you in subsequent parts of the video how to make use of a lot of these features here. But for now, all we're going to do is post the annotation. You can see that the option I have is to post the annotation to the group, or I can actually just make a note to myself. I'm just going to leave it as is and post the annotation to the group. I'm going to show you how to do some formatting of your annotation. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing I did before, highlight some text. This button's going to pop up. I hit annotate. Uh, I I can write a nice looking annotation. And if I want to make the word nice italics, I can just select it and hit italics. You can see that it's adding in little asterisks. It doesn't look italics, but it's put some asterisks around the word. Or if I want to make a word a bold, it's going to add double asterisks around the word. Uh, and uh, you can also do some other things like create a list. So it's, the list will just look like some regular uh, item one, item two. Okay, you can make a list or it could be a bulleted list. And two. so you can just kind of copy the formatting from before. You can always preview it and see what this is going to look like. As you can see it's going to look nicely format. I can go back to write mode. It's going to give me these options to do this again. I just post it and now the annotation appears formatted. Now I'm going to show you how to add a hyperlink. It's going to be very similar to what we just did with the formatting. Again, so just select the text you want to highlight. Um, hit annotate. And here I find it's actually easier to press the to insert a link. You're going to get uh, two square brackets. Again, this is all done in the markdown language. You don't, I, this is guides you so that you don't really need to learn the ins and outs, but you can put the link that you want to where you want things to go to. So I'm just going to, um, and here in the square brackets that precede that link, you can write the uh, words that you want linked. You see that if I preview this now, it's going to show you that the words are linked and the link will go to uh, scalcomlab.ca. If you, again, if that, to make things even easier, you can write the words to link, then highlight them, and then hit the link button. And then that's already going to put those in the square brackets. And then in the right, um, you would probably just copy and paste your link in there. So I'm just going to copy the same link as before, just for as an example. If you just post a link in there, okay, uh, without doing those things, it's still going to be linked, but then you're going to read the whole link. And if the link is very long, let's say your link is something like what we have, um, what we have here, right, uh, it's going to make your annotation look a little bit messy. It's always just a little bit nicer to just put in, in the formatting. You can just type these things by hand, or you can use the tool that I just showed you and just put the link in square brackets, uh, the words rather in square brackets, and then the link in regular round brackets. So what if you want to do something that isn't just words, but you're going to try to insert some images into your annotations? Well, what, I, what you need to do in this case is actually first go off and look for your images. Find the image that you want to include. In this case, I'm just going to grab this image from Wikipedia. I'm just going to select it. Uh, and what you need to do is make sure you can find the link to the image. So often what you can look in the browser, if you right click, in your browser or two finger click, depending on what you're using. Um, what you want to do is get the image location okay? and not save the image, but rather get the image location. So we're just going to copy that and have that in my clipboard. I'm going to go back to the page where I want to make the annotation and say here that in these, I'm going to turn these words outcomes and I want to um, have that annotate that with the image of my affiliated woodpecker. I'm going to annotate here. The easiest thing again is going to be to uh, hit this, icon here that's the insert image icon and then includes and then paste in your link to the affiliated root picker. You'll notice this looks very similar to a regular link except that it's got an uh, exclamation point at the beginning. That's what's going to tell hypothesis that this is going to be an image. So if I hit I can preview that you can see that it's embedded the image within the annotation and if I post it that's exactly what the annotation looks like. And finally, let me just show you how to include a video if you want in your annotation. So you're just going to start your annotation in the same way. Uh, but then when you're ready to paste in a link, I'm just going to come over, find my YouTube video, copy that URL, just like as it is there, come back, paste it in my annotations. And if you hit post, it's just going to include the video and then the, the uh, YouTube link, uh, the YouTube video will be embedded within the annotation as simple as that.
one more thing I want to show you is how do you reply to an annotation? I mean, these are social online annotations. And so far, everything I've shown you is just how do you annotate yourself? So this is going to be very straightforward to do as well. Um, same thing as always. You want to just open up the bookmarklet by, uh, so that we get the sidebar come up. Um, you're going to scroll down. You can see, oh, there's someone is annotated here. Uh, so you can kind of see uh, where the annotations are. Uh, and let's say I want to reply to this annotation. Well, very simply, we're going to come and find this arrow here that's for replying. Uh, so obviously, I have also the trashing and editing icons because this is my own annotation. If it was yours, these wouldn't be here. Next to that is this little arrow where I can reply to an annotation. Uh, the reply, all that's going to do is open up an exact replica of the annotation uh, uh, input box, and it has all the same affordances. And you can reply with all of the same kinds of things that I was just showing you. So this is a reply. When you do that and you post it, the person whom you just replied to will get an email notification letting them know that someone has replied and a link so they can come in and come directly to the annotation that just got a reply and they can see. Lastly, I just want to show you how things look uh, when you do them on a PDF because I imagine a lot of the things that you are going to be annotating will be, uh, will be PDFs. So I'm just going to click on a link to one of our most recent papers. Uh, they should open up a PDF. Uh, it's important if you want to annotate. You can annotate with hypothesis. You can annotate PDFs as long as the PDF is open in the browser and that it's the only thing. You should see it embedded within the browser uh, itself. Um, that took quite a bit of time to load, but that's just the PDF is loaded. Um, and then you can see now that if I hit the hypothesis bookmarklet, uh, you should be loaded. And apologies if my face here is covering the buttons, but this just looks like standard, the same way that you saw before um, the uh, drawer. Uh, and again, here you can highlight the words in the PDF and annotate them in exactly the same way. One thing to note is that you don't need the PDF to be on the web for this to work. If you have already downloaded the PDF and you have it on your computer, you can always take the PDF and drag it onto your browser window. Again, if you op just double click the PDF from your computer, it's gonna open up in Preview or in Adobe or whatever software you use to read PDFs. But if you are want to be able to annotate it, you need to open the PDF with the browser. That means take the PDF, pick it up, and drag it onto a browser window that you already have open. It's gonna open up just like this and you'll be ready to go. And there's just one more thing. If you're using the Chrome extension, this does not apply if you're using the bookmarklet, but if you want to use the Chrome extension uh, with PDFs, you need to, uh, and you want to be able to do that trick where you take a PDF that's on your computer and you're going to be able to and open it within the browser by dragging and dropping the PDF into your browser so you can start annotating. You're going to need to give the Chrome extension just one extra permission. The way you do that is once you've got the, web, the, the extension loaded, you're going to Come where the extension is, you're going to right click or two finger click. You're going to hit uh, options. Oh. Options. It's going to load and it's going to, uh, well, first ask if you want to label the extension badge, which I think is that so you can see those, um, the numbers come up. Uh, and then what you want to be able to do is allow access to file URL. So this is going to be what you need to do to be able to. Uh, load a file, a, URL, a PDF that is on your computer instead of one that you just find on the web. And that's it. Those are the very basic kind of annotation types and the things that you can do and how you get them done. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop me a line or ask them in the comments here. I'll try to keep an eye on these as well. And uh, we'll try to get you sorted out and get you started. Looking forward to it.